All right. Good morning. Um, so, so welcome to the RNN podcast series, Recruiting Works. And I'm joined today by really an old friend and colleague from the industry, uh, George LaRock, who um, yeah, I, I partner with across a myriad of, of, of things from sharing jokes on Facebook to you're running a, a little group on, on, on Facebook called Talent Product Plays to just kind of collaboration across RNN um, and, and, and his, in his, his venue, WorkTech. I don't want to steal too much of his thunder as far as who he is, but the reason we're in today is I, I, I put a lot of value in George as, as, a, as a thinker and, 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 a, and a leader in the industry with a really, he's got deep and broad perspective across both the technology space as well as what's happening across corporate recruiting, what's happening with investments, um, who's buying who, and what's happening with the, with the actual, with, with, or with our product friends in the industry too. So I wanted to kind of talk to him a bit about that um, and, and get a bit of his, and I say crack crystal ball because mine shattered in the floor at this point. I have no idea what's going on even next week as far as the industry goes. I have thoughts that keep changing. George probably has a perspective that maybe is a bit bit smarter, I, I, I would assume, um, around, or especially certainly around the, the investment space. So I want to have him in here for that. And, and just in general, to kind of catch up and talk a bit about the industry and share um, share our thoughts. So George, with, with, with that said, welcome, welcome to the Recruiting Works. Wow, Martin, that was, uh, you, you almost made me blush with that. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. That was uh, quite a quite an intro. And thanks. I'm, this is episode one, right? Yeah, we're, 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 long, we're kicking off. We're doing, um, All you know, right. this, this is your, um, you're, my, you're my inaugural guest. So, you know, also everyone, welcome to the Recruiter Works in general. Um, happy zero anniversary, I guess, 0.01, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you know, really happy to have George here to kind of help us kind of guide the ship out of the of the harbor, I guess, and into the wild ocean of, of nice. podcasting. I'm, I'm excited to be that that person. So, yeah. You're my tugboat cool. captain, man. Guide me out. <laughs> All right. You got to tell me where you want to go. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I am. I, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of talking to the idea of you in a tugboat with a pull thing on. Um, you, you could pull it off, though, I bet. I bet you could. Uh, so, 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 um, yeah, I, so it's, I, this is really confusing time to be in the recruiting industry, right? Um, and, 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 and how, and, 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 how, and predicting where we're heading and even looking back is confusing. There, there's so many shifts going on out there um, across labor in general. I, I, I was describing it recently um, in a conversation. The, the interlocking pieces that are that are hitting everything right now are just really, really getting geometric. And yeah, you know, I've, I've got a friend who's a quant, and I and he and I caught up, and he's like, we can't even figure it out. Like what's happening with, with because of because of of, of of what's happening with longshoremen and and and, and what's happening with, with 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 shipping and microchips and, and the shortage of wood all those things believe it or not connect together and are, and are the reason why you can't find stuff at Walmart. Um, it, 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 there's the and it and it and a lot of it comes back down to labor and the impact of this bomb of of of, of a pandemic hitting the global economy um, and and really showing both how interlocked we are and how vulnerable we are because then interlocking and, and, and the sort of whip that's going through the supply chain and, and it is, and it's, it's, it's echoing everywhere. And, and I think that as an industry, we are in some ways, we're kind of finally getting our recognition. Um, and, and, and that could, that's, that could good and bad, right? Because as well, it's, while while a lot of folks out there in the world who are beyond recruiting are, are starting to understand that hey, this really is hard. This really does matter, and labor is critical, and talent's critical. And it's no longer lip service. They're also recognizing that what the hell are you guys doing um, it, it, to, to fix this problem? And so the pressures that are coming at us. I think are fairly enormous. And and I've been noticing some trends across vendors where they are trying to get ready for what they think of they're coming. And I think the greenhouse. Um, and I keep wanting to say interstellar, it's interstellar acquisition recently um, is right. I think a good a good example of of one vendor getting ready for that. They're looking at what's coming in gig and in flexibility and shifting models of hiring. So do you want to start with that? That, that very small topic we can sort of focus in on and, and have a quick conversation and solve the world's problems? Because we can do yeah. that, right? Yeah. In well, like five I, minutes. I, yeah. All right. Cool. I I was I can stretch it out then. I was going to do Good. it in three, but uh, oh, fair. Talk so. slow. I talk fast. You talk slow. You can fill it. All right. All right. Well, uh, yeah. I don't think anybody really has a grasp on 
what's happening. Um, you know, there are because, or I should say, uh, what the sum of the parts really is, right? So, um, you to your point, um, you know, there are a lot of people who thought that uh, coming out of or at, at, are, I, I think I hope we're coming out of this pandemic now or beginning to that as um, the, in the U.S. as the financial assistance um, was was expiring, that people would be coming back to the workforce. Well, that that wasn't it. That we thought that as wages, we saw these wage increases, right? And a lot of employers are increasing wages that that would pull people into, you know, certain jobs, especially frontline jobs. Um, doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, we, I, I think the, uh, there are a lot of really interesting things happening out there and some, you know, uh, instances where somebody gets it right or, they're lucky enough to be um, offering the right jobs at the, to, the, to the right people with the right pay um, and they're able to you know, have success. But there are other examples where because of whether it's location or geography or demographics or um, one piece in that puzzle that doesn't, that, that doesn't fit for them, um, they're, they're not able to drive the same success. So you, um, the restaurants closed three nights a week. The, um, the facilities are, uh, are not staffed. The, there are no truck drivers, right? There, there, are some products ship on time and get here on time and others don't. And it's, it's all so much labor in, involved, but, um, I, every economist that, um, Every economist that I look at uh, or and that I listen to, um, it's just been a series of predictions that that haven't they haven't panned out, um, and or, or or aspects have panned out. So I, I think everybody's really confused, and um, and we're we're sort of living in some ways in the future that we always said would come. The world is more flat. Um, you know, people can work from anywhere. Uh, the knowledge economy is, you know, driving everything. Uh, we're a service economy now, so uh, the, the 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 talent has won. All of those things are are true, but but not for everyone, right? That's not distributed equally to all workers. Um, and it turns out we're really dependent um, on the workers that aren't participating in the knowledge economy and the knowledge economy is really dependent on those workers. So, so it's, it's trouble uh, across the board challenge, I should say across the board trouble in many places. Um, and I think, you know, the greenhouse deal that you mentioned, yeah, that's a, that's, that's one, um, one deal that, uh, you know, greenhouse, I think it, the term word that I've used to describe them, and there are a couple of vendors that fit within this in different categories, has always been thoughtful. So they are, as much as they're looking forward and innovating to deal with shifting workforces and demographics and, and the, the changes in, in skills and the, uh, the changes in the way um, recruiters work. Um, and their customers, recruiters, and sourcers work. They're also um, very, they're very deliberate, and uh, at the same time, um, you know, they sort of march to their own drum when it comes to and this is good for customers. You know, they know who their they know the profile of their successful customer. They listen to their customers, and this inner seller deal as much as it's strategic and fills a gap around sourcing, it also, um, you know, that, that gap that it's filling is, you know, they're looking at the way that recruiters work in their market segment, which, you know, they're capping out in the 15,000 employees deliberately. They're not trying to sell to everybody. They're not trying, they're trying to deliver their product to the companies that, they know they can support and they can be successful with. So they have a lot of um, full stack recruiters, right? They do the job intake. They 
They handle the job posting and advertising. They handle the sourcing, the direct sourcing. Mm -hmm. They handle the hiring workflow. They make the offer. They, they do the whole thing. They also have clients on the larger end who have dedicated sourcers, dedicated recruitment marketing people, branding folks. So they're, they're very aware of who their customers are and who their, their ideal customer is and and make no mistake that they're building for that. That's one of the things I really, that particular vendor I really like about them. Almost, you know, I'm always pushing them to, you know, well, if you've got customers with 15,000 employees, why don't you go, why don't you go after 50? And, and they're, well, they're going to get there. It's just, sure. they're going to do it at a pace where customers are happy. Well, I think it's, yeah. And it just, I think just so, so Daniel, uh, Chait, I would say it wrong. Yeah. Chait? There you got it. Yep. Okay, I was okay. once I was I was think I'm saying it wrong. I don't know why, um, even though it's spelled just like that. Um, and then John, um, oh my gosh, not not Stamos. I'm having a horrible time. <laughs> John's last name all of a sudden. Uncle um, Jesse? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Um, um, Strasburg, right? What's yeah. that? Strasburg. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and I follow just very much with anything. I'm I'm really bad with names. This will become clear over time with this podcast. I'll, I'll call myself the wrong name occasionally. Um, so so but Daniel and John are, are both. I, I know Daniel's an engineer by training. I think John is too, actually. And they you know, they plan well. That's what, one thing. One thing really good software engineers do is they they can plan and build, and they're not going to rush into a big project without getting the foundation right. And I, I think they're working on that 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 kind of process. And I and I think it's why they they've designed the product the way they have because it they they come at it from a higher manager perspective and and I was talking with Daniel Asher yesterday and I, I said one thing I've always sort of been, been fascinated by is who the, who the founders are of of, of, a, of a tech firm in, in our space because if they come from HR or recruiting they have a different they have a different approach and they're solving toward almost a process problem with sourcing and, 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 and the ATS and whatnot. And they're thinking about what would bug them as recruiters. Hiring yeah. managers come at it from a hiring manager perspective. And quite often it's very different. You know, the, what, mm-hmm. what the actual, who, 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 who's, their, who's, their, who's, their, who's their customer in their head as well as first is themselves. I want to solve my problem. And, and then it kind of, and it kind of builds from there. Does that makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. And Daniel did both, right? He, he, um, the last thing he did before I've, I've spent a lot of time at greenhouse. Uh, the last thing he did before, uh, starting greenhouse was he was running HR and rec- re- well, okay. recruiting Didn't for a that. tech shop. Okay. And yeah. Okay. So he, he, um, so the best founders, in my opinion, um, they, it's not, it's not necessarily the ones who come out of the space. And it's not the necessarily the ones who come from outside the space, but the ones, regardless, right? It's either profile that can let go of where they mm-hmm. came from sure. and move closer to the other side, right? So the the recruiter who can't see beyond the workflow and needs to become a CEO of a tech shop and and think bigger about the problem that they're solving and how that scales, um, or the hiring manager who can't, will spend the time to learn or, or the, you know, whatever business person, whatever, wherever they're coming from, not in recruiting or HR, but they'll spend the time and invest to learn. Um, and ultimately they become that they become a part of our ecosystem. They, they might not have run a desk, but they've listened to customers. They've they're, they're, they're solving the customer's problem and not, just their own, as you put it. So I think the the best founders find their way to the to the to that middle, no matter where they come from. Yeah, I think I think Clinch did I think Clinch did that pretty well too in their time. Yeah, before, yeah. Before yeah. they were acquired, um, yeah. and, and really kind of understood where, where, you know, they really understood the actual business uh, and and the impact yeah. too. Um, and then I'm also thinking about um, and the more, this is more of a, a classic recruiting background is 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 um is paradox. What they're doing. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I, I think it's really interesting. Um, with with and I think actually with the I, so the Tradeify acquisition I thought was amazing, and, and I got a bit of background from from Cat Drum, who's their VP of Alliances recently. And, and that acquisition came from um, it was from the grounds up. It was actually their sales team kept running into Tradeify in the field, and we're and and they're they're complementary. They weren't competing, but they they like their they they like their sales counterparts when they met them. There was a DNA yeah. match there, and similar clients, similar way of dealing with clients, and it kept happening. So it bubbled up from the bottom. 
it was it was it was it was, it was, it was from, the, from the grassroots and, and 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 up to the executives. And I think actually uh, with Intercellar, too, wasn't um, wasn't the VP of engineering at Greenhouse using Intercellar for yeah. himself? Yeah. And yeah. So so I, I, I think yeah, that's a hundred. Yeah. What? No, so go ahead. You were saying I was just a hundred percent right. Like in the interview I did with uh, Daniel, he mentioned that and. Culturally at Greenhouse, I, I said this in the interview um, that it's the second time um, where a story from Greenhouse was about one of their engineering leaders um, actually being hands-on in the recruitment process, mm-hmm. like sourcing, right? Well, 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 that, well that's the, the um, thing is that, that but that's their product, that's their their philosophy. The hiring right. should be more involved. And and just kind of pivoting forward a bit and thinking about you know our, the, the our initial opening about the the. These these changing times, these these change in times like these, um, or some cliche like that, a hero will rise, um, an ATS will rise. But I was thinking about how you know, there's there's the shifting in how we hire, how we employ. Um, there there's shorter term employments happening left and right. You know, gig was already here, and that kind of that kind of approach was, was bubbling up, and then they started fracturing, and it just got, I think, even more intense. There's been some 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 accelerants in certain 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 approaches, and Gig is certainly one of them. Uh, and, and I'm thinking that 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 of course, the lucky greenhouse will, will, will be smarter in the end because you are you're you're allowing you're you're focusing your your TA team more on sourcing, on constantly looking for talent, and building the pipelines because you're going to have to. You have to be, be, be you, have to, you have to know your audience really well. Be, be in touch with it. Be like a staffing agency essentially, and, and then your hiring manager has to get more involved in the actual process of bringing them through and recruiting them. Yeah, and I think they're teeing up for that a little bit. Yeah, well, you, you've you've brought up uh, two vendors that um, represent the future in both greenhouse and paradox in different ways. Uh, for, so I, I, I just everything that I'm seeing as I'm talking to. Um, practitioners and leaders um, and tech providers. So Greenhouse isn't there today, but if you look look back to one of the last things they did before this acquisition, um, they implemented a programmatic um, solution um, into their platform, programmatic um, Mm -hmm. advertising. And now they've implemented sourcing. So imagine a world where you could sit down and say, um, uh, and, and in fact, they are working today on sort of a, um, a SLA type measurement um, within their interface to show which makes total. I've got sense. a job. Yeah, I've got a goal. I've got a now. Imagine, imagine if you could say, you know, I've got a budget, or or what if I change the the educational requirement on this job, and then what if I spent a thousand dollars on advertising? What if I spent 500? What if I spent 10,000? What if I didn't advertise at all? How long would it take me to source this? What, what kind of talents available? That, that kind of strategic, like it's, it's, it's strategic and it's tactical at the same mm-hmm. time, because it's mm-hmm. the, it's going to inform your, your intake conversation with a hiring manager as much as it's going to inform your budgets and your strategic planning at the, at the front end of the year. Um, so they're putting together the elements to that. Imagine a time, you know, a, a, that imagine a world there there's, and they're not the only ones, but they're, they're putting together the, the elements. You can see it, the building blocks to that. Super um, interesting. Yeah. And, and then paradox, what I I've said it before recently, and I'll say it again, you know, conversational interfaces um, are the future. So whether it's candidates, recruiters, hiring managers, conversational interfaces are not necessarily everything, but they're going to be pretty much everything we, we care about. Um, and we're going to find ourselves interacting with, you know, systems of record on the, on the back end and conversational interfaces on the front end, you know, and whether I'm, um, you know, how, how I'm, how my, my natural language is going to to um, is going to move the process forward, or get me the resources that I need, or the answers that I need. And I hate to, I, I, I'm not, I hate to do this, but think about the whole meta thing, and <laughs> where, and and they're working on stuff that um, where you can think about what you want to happen. Literally, just think about it, and it will happen. And I'm gonna now I'm gonna draw the analogy, like pull this thread. 
you, I go all the way back to early days at Brass Ring. I was like employee number 10 or 11. And I ran the go-to-market side of things, right? So sat down with one of the founders and we had a running joke at the time. And our joke was what, what customers really want is a hat to put on so they can think about what they want mm -hmm. and the system will find the people mm -hmm. for it. Until and and it's it's it was a joke about you know we need to make it that easy. We were saying you know we need to give them the 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 button to push and and the profile emerges. Give them a, give but them that, a sorting a sorting hat essentially. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That'd be a great assessment, right? Here, put this on. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming. Um, you heard but I, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm getting way out there. But that that's the. You know, it's not that far out there if you think about consumerization. And I hope it's not Facebook who runs the metaverse, and mm -hmm. like I, I really do. But um, but that expectation of how we interact with, like, think about what Facebook and LinkedIn and social media and mobile phones have done to our expectation. It's all good to what they've done to our expectations of technology. That doesn't change. We're we're going to have uh, candidates and managers and recruiters coming in who expect the technology to interact with us that way. So that's way out in the future, um, but it's you know it's not like it's not like it's not in our lifetime or something. No, we'll see it. And and I, and I, and I don't disagree with you when you, when you start again start pulling the threads. It's, I mean the the back end of all this is is, is data, right? Right. Is demographics, is labor demographics, is who is where when. And, and, and any good recruiter, at least in the corporate side, for sure, and, and I'd say staff and you can do this as well. But if you're a corporate recruiter, you're doing an intake meeting. One thing you, you sit down with the hiring manager, they say, you, you bring your laptop and they say, I want this person here with this, this amount of skills, yada, yada. And you pop it open and you classically you go to LinkedIn. I say classically. It's not that long ago that it started, but it is not classically. Um, and, and you say, great, here's what you're looking for. Well, here's, there's, there's three of them in Milwaukee and, you, and, you, and you're looking for hire 10 in Milwaukee. So what do we do? And, and that helps guide the hiring, hopefully hiring manager into opening up their, their, their perimeters a bit. And you can see, well, look, look at this now, look at this now. And that's a, what was on the LinkedIn. I don't say clunky interface. LinkedIn has got value, but it's limited, right? Yeah. Um, and the filters are limited and the actual data is not always accurate, et cetera, et cetera. If you're from engineers, there's a whole issue there, but but that's the idea. You at least could start guiding them a little bit. And then if, if you get more sophisticated, you, you, you've got an MC license, right? Or, 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 or labor IQ or one of them, right? Where you can then say, great, based on what you're looking for, here's the salary we're, salary we're looking at in, the, in this area of pay scale. And you can, you can build them a model, but it's, it, you're jumping from, from one source to the other and you're, 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 you're making your own connections for them and it's verbal and it's messy and you're probably getting things wrong and you're building spreadsheets and it's back and forth. If you can have a, just a, a dashboard, to your point, and give it the hiring manager or give them access. They don't even need the recruiter at that point to a certain extent, right? Um, and I'm going somewhere with this. So, so all of a sudden they can build up their own kind of parameters and, and what they're looking for. And the system will know, great, based on the job you, you, you put in, you're looking for X, Y, and Z. I'm smart enough to read your, what you're looking for because I, I do NLP really well all day long. I'm smart. Uh, I've been learning like a machine. So I can, based on what you, what you plugged in or what you said verbally, what you spoke to me, Let's go forward with this or thought later on, but your hiring manager, you're speaking to me, you're telling me what you want. I'm your, I'm your, your verbal interface and the, at greenhouse, not externally, you're talking to greenhouse verbally and it, you tell it what you're looking for. Yeah. I need to fill this job and it's going to be, do, it's going to do work like this. This is what I do. This is what the body I need done for this job. The system will know based on what you, what the, needs to be done for the job. This, these are the kind of profiles and skill sets to look for and the locations and the salary It'll tell you based on what you're looking for. Here's where the market's paying. Here's where here, here's, here's where, where they're available, et cetera, et cetera. Here's your timing, and it'll do it'll do it in real time. So you're talking yep. to the machine. You're talking to you know think of, think of old, you know, Star Trek, the next next generation, um, you know computer, and you tell you what, and it's you know, a cup of Earl Grey tea hot, and it gives you what you want, and it and it, and it gives you a list, and it starts doing outreach automatically. So now it's now it's reaching out to them via the the, the 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 job network. It's doing automated sourcing. It's sending out an email campaign. It, it it encourages you to actually record a video saying what you're looking for, so we can deliver your your face to you to these candidates. Or if it's really really smart, it's doing a max headroom thing and making an avatar of you and you're talking and you're talking. It's talking for you, and all of a sudden it's doing your job. 
um, getting really way out there, um, matrix level. But it, but it's it's basically it's basically it's it's it's, it's building a profile for you and looking for it, and it's yep. seeking it out for you. Seek out another great company, by the way. Yep. Um, and pulling back in these profiles and encouraging them to come in, and then they come in and they're doing that they're they're hitting the paradox level, you know, visual interface and the assessments and all that, and they're going through the process. And where does that leave a TA team in that process? Are they simply the, the tools managers and, and the, the strategists? Does it does it eliminate the need for bodies essentially in the process? Um, without, without freaking I, people out, but yeah, I, I, it begs the I, question. So I, I all of these uh, shifts always lead to that, and um, even when we when we were just taking uh, employers to the, to the web to, uh, you know, on demand and SAS um, the biggest fear was, you know, the, the re- you know, the, the, you know, stopping to need, right. The, the ceasing to need recruiters and, and never, it doesn't happen. Now this is, you know, a much more direct line to something like that. Uh, but I, I think there's an evolution um, that, that takes place. Um, you know, I, I think if you're today, right now, if your job is to schedule interviews and to, um, to just manage workflow without adding value, you should create an upskilling plan because, uh, because you, you need to, you're going to need to change before the change comes to you um, or be ready to change when it comes to you. Um, I think uh, that will carry through in some areas, but, but I don't see, um, I don't see candidates um, for many jobs uh, going completely through the process without human intervention. Um, I see them very comfortable going, you know, scheduling and, taking assessments and getting information and interacting with a conversational interface um, and filling a lot of the like administrative intake that you, you might, you find yourself doing as a recruiter work history, things, things that are, that are very specific. Um, But you're going, you need, you know, you need those, let's face it, those marketers and salespeople to position the culture, the company, the jobs, the, the career path. So how does that all, you know, um, how does that evolve? I, I, don't, I don't have the answers. There's definitely going to be some changes, but even programmatic advertising in the B2C and B2B world, which has been adopted at like 85, 90%, it hasn't displaced all the people that were involved in advertising and promotion and creative and all of that, um, it's shifted the way, you know, the agency's role in that process has, has shifted, become more strategic. The, the client side roles have shifted. So it's probably going to look something like that. There may be fewer people overall, mm-hmm. but what it does, I'm going on and on here, but it, what, okay, it, what, it, what it does do is it, it opens things up where the, level of sophistication. So right now you might not have some of the, this, this process or this approach in the smaller end of the middle market, but these, these interfaces actually open up the, the approach from a talent attraction perspective, a talent retention perspective, and you're going to need some strategic recruiting and HR and employee experience types around these systems Versus what you have right now, which are um, understaffed environments that are that are very transactional, you know, chasing process. Um, this is going to change the profile. It's going to take all of that off the table, and it, it will make those uh, create a need for more strategic players in smaller companies. That that's going to happen. That's I see those tools starting to enter the market today on both the HR side and the recruiting side. So who's an example one, of those? Who do you yeah, well, about? one, one other little tidbit, I, I don't want to lose it. Um, when you were talking about the, the, the Max Hedrum, we're not there yet, but the company that acquired Pandologic, uh, Veritone, mm-hmm. um, what they're, they, they're a, an AI and automation shop. And so they, and they're very specific in a few different industries. 
one of them is media. And one of the things that they do in media is that I, I don't think they're doing the deep fake video stuff yet. I bet they're working on it because what they're doing is um, let's say you have a podcast uh, as you do you, they give you a few scripts to read and the system learns your voice, your intonation, your, you know, your reaction. Um, and then you write the podcast and the system produces it. So, or, or anybody can write the podcast. So think of, um, celebrities and th or think of marketing applications, sure. voiceover uh, applications, you know, uh, you license my voice as a celebrity and I approve the script and the, the machine does the work. Um, and so the next step would be deep faking um, a, an actual celebrity, the whole thing, the voice, the, the yeah, whole well, thing. Or, or the, your engineering star. You know, somebody who you one of your famous employees who everyone yeah. wants to work with, yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which, in, in full disclosure, I have done in the past, where I've, I've, well, <laughs> hear me out. Um, I, I was <laughs> sorry, I'm saying it was a sourcing tool. I was working for a client, and they had this idea that what if we could create like uh, fake LinkedIn profiles or duplicate LinkedIn profiles? Sorry, LinkedIn, for if you're listening to this, um, of some of our some of our managers. And then give the recruiters access to those profiles and oh. have them send up messages to candidates as if they were the local GM or this, this senior project manager or this engineering leader. And, and, and then the recruiter would, would have access, get the message back and still kind of acting like they're the real person and make even make LinkedIn connections that way. It felt creepy. It was creepy, but, we, <laughs> but effective. Uh, is, the, is that like a, is that sort of like an ethical catfish? Is that, I don't know, I'm not sure ethical is the word. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was a professional catfish, right? Um, what it was, okay. what it, was. Yeah. it was, it was a, it was a corporate corporate catfishing. Um, so it's, it's, it's being done already. I mean, I was just, um, if they were doing it, some of them, some of a lot of other folks too. Um, yeah. On the flip side, I've worked with, I, I've worked with the hiring managers and engineers who were important. And so listen, I'm, I'm targeting somebody, I, they, they won't get back to me. Would you mind sending them a message? Yeah, I've written it for you to send from your account, which is yeah. still a little. No, I mean, that's but communication. It's, but it's, but it's that's communication. You're, 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 I'm wishing sure you're the ghostwriter. It's like Sierra de Bergiac in the, in the bushes telling them what to say because they're so pretty. Um, well, I, I mean, pulled the classical literature to this podcast, by the way. It's, <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> that is Don't impressive. Bet. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to do for your listenership, but it's, but it is impressive. I it don't is. insult my listeners. Look, 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 <laughs> look, I think you're all geniuses. That's not what I meant. That's it's not, your, not, think you're an idiot. I, it wasn't about the uh, intelligence. <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, I, I mean, ghostwriting or providing a message to be sent that that's always been happening. And I, I actually wish more teams were equipped with resources to do that for their managers. Um, you know, think about, um, and, and content in general, right. Um, think about the trouble we have with job descriptions. Think about the trouble we have with the way we communicate diversity, inclusion, mm -hmm. equity, mm -hmm. like think about mm -hmm. all this. Um, and, and also, you know, that, that, um, that future that you, that you mapped out, um, and even today, the things that we can do today with programmatic, um, we, we have an opportunity to deliver better quality. And by quality, I mean more diverse pools mm -hmm. of candidates. So, you know, the, um, it's important that as these are developed, that, that I, I think there's enough I hope there's enough attention on bias mitigation and things to, to keep us on the right track, but that's incumbent on all of us who are selecting these systems to make sure that we're, we're using them for good and not just for fastest. Right. Well, and that, that's what I'm and, and looking back to um, what we were talking earlier about what's, what's going to happen with, with kind of roles and whatnot. You mentioned coordinate. I mean, basically you were, they say scheduled coordinators are in trouble. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is is I do we, and, and I don't think we're going to see a a, 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 a a bloodletting in the in the industry, but I do think roles are going to shift and 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 attention to what skills are important to your point earlier, and I'm thinking about what's happening in 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 the in the ad industry and again tying it in again at that point too. 
uh, a lot of the bit the big uh, firms that that had outsourced creative that, that so you are, are now 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 acquiring creative shops and bring creative back in house. So Accenture is is beefing up their creative teams because that's Good what point. they need to be offering now. There there there's a, a there there will still be a need for a brand a branding skill set. A, a, can, a, a candidate experience, you know, user experience, UX experience, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, and, and high touch. And I, and I think diversity too, um, and being more strategic about advising internally. Those skills are, are going to get more in demand. But I do think that the more the process piece, the things that you actually can automate that you that are that are that are, that, are, that cost you money and you can say this is expensive. Why would I be doing this? I can buy this tool here and do it X times faster for you know, a third of the cost, that'll happen. But I do think you right. to your point that we're, we're gonna, we'll, we'll still see a need for creativity and branding uh, and, and, and better job descriptions. I'm, I'm always, I, I can't stand most job descriptions. I'm, it's, right. and it's, it's crazy we haven't, we haven't actually de- dealt with that yet as, as an industry. I mean, good Lord. Yeah. Um, it, it's such a low hanging fruit to fix. Yeah, but, but and to your, to your point, um, the, the there's a real reason why you need humans there because the machines can't, the machines need data to adapt and they mm-hmm. need rules to adapt. They need to be trained to adapt. Mm-hmm. And most, a lot of the adaptation that we're doing on the ground from a recruiting retention perspective is on the fly, right? So uh, events happen in the world and how that shifts the way we're recruiting. Uh, you know, think about what's just happened in the last 18 months. Um, we need humans thinking about what does this mean for distributed work? How does distributed work relate to our environment? What does it mean for the jobs that we have open today? What does it mean for the process we put in place? What is it, you know, that that's something that you know, the minute that, um, or, or in the few weeks that that change was, was lowered upon us, um, the machines wouldn't have done well in mm-hmm. adapting their process and workflow to that. We, we, we need humans there pointing them and, and, and hurting them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, all right. So, so I think uh, on that note, that, that positive note, I think, frankly, um, we've solved okay. all the problems. We've, we've, we've mapped the future. <laughs> the Borg are coming, but they still need a queen. Um, so, you know, you'll need some kind of like level of creativity to, to kind of, kind of run things. Um, it, it's, 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 it's always a pleasure catching up with you, uh, George. And, and, oh, same. Always. You know, it's, always. It's, these are always, these are always, always good chats, I think as well. And, and again, thanks for being our, our first ever guest. And frankly, our, our, our te- I don't want to say test, Dummy, because that sounds wrong. Um, but our, our tugboat captain, we'll go back to the analogy, <laughs> guiding us out into the ocean. Um, and th- this crazy new world of, of, of podcasting, talking about what's, what makes recruiting work. I appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone, for, 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 for joining us. Uh, and we will um, we'll catch you very, very soon on our, our next episode. Thanks.